Hello everyone, how you doing? My name is Angelo Kumoji. As you have seen the title of this video, Finnish University has messed up my doctoral program. I, I was enrolled in a doctoral program with Finnish University and I have completed all the required courses. I have 100% of the classes completed. I, I was a student, a doctoral student with Finnish University from 2013 to 2017. I completed all the classes. I was enrolled in uh, management classes. The program is called Organizational Leadership, Management of Organizational Leadership. The degree was to be Doctor in Management of Organizational Leadership. And I finished all the classes, like I say. And I have a good GPA. My GPA was 3.79. Maybe we can say 3.80, 79. We can say 3.8. 79 to be exact. I got mostly A's and a couple of B's. That's why I make it because the total is four. So 3.7 3 or 3.8 out of four, that's good. Um, that is to show that I was not a, a stupid student or I was not a lazy student. I did good. So how did Phoenix University mess up my doctoral program. Like I said, I completed all the courses, 100%, and it was time for me to submit my proposal. If you're familiar with the doctoral program, after taking the classes, you have to submit a proposal, you have to write your, your dissertation, doctoral dissertation, and get it through a process of review you are assigned a chairman, a chairman, there's a chairman, somebody who, who is uh, analyzing your, your writing throughout the program. Early on in the first year, they assign you a chairman. A chairman is uh, like a leader, somebody leading your writing. Somebody, a faculty member, I should say. A faculty member who is an expert in your domain of study, and this chairman is supervising your writing from the beginning, from your first year. Remember, I was there from 2013 to 2017. So, I had a chairman, and uh, from the get-go, there was not a lot of help from the chairman. Uh, as a determined student to complete my degree, I expected the chairman to criticize my, my little writing, and then be sending me changes, change that, so I can grow because I wanted to get my degree. Just like everybody else, right? But I didn't see a lot of feedback from him. When I sent him things, he just check it and no criticism, no do it like this, do it that way. And I was surprised. Although I'm, I'm generally a good writer through our education because doctoral program, you started somewhere. You can know if you are good, a good writer from the high school and all that up to this level. So, but I, I was expecting, knowing, having an idea about the doctoral program, I was expecting a lot of criticism from my chairman so I can improve my writing and, and, and get it going. But he will just, he just check everything. When I write something, he just agree with it. I was surprised. So I was thinking, am I that good or what? Either I was that good or he was just passive about my writing. So, but I just kept silent because I didn't know what was going on in those early years until I finished my, uh, all my classes. Now it was time for me to submit my proposal. Normally, you could have your proposal ready before you finish your class, your classes, 
what you your class you can have your proposal ready but somehow i never submit my proposal because my chairman never gave me the go ahead remember he wasn't giving me a lot of feedback so either i'm very good or i'm just not good but in the last minute i realized that i need to take a proposal class what is a proposal class a proposal class is given to students who who, the, who don't have their proposal ready meaning remember the chairman supervises the writing of the student along from first year going on so if you and, and your chairman the student and the chairman they were not able to understand each other to have a good proposal to submit they will ask you to take a class where the student will be will take the class but the chairman will be a full participant into this class the student will take the class all the classes are online the student will take the class with a methodology somebody they call a methodologies a methodologies is somebody who is an expert in figuring out in your writing what is going on I would imagine a methodology is somebody higher than your chairman, or if I can say that, or somebody who have more knowledge than your chairman. The problem that your chairman wasn't able to find, this methodology is who find it and recommend things. So the the classes is for eight weeks, eight weeks classes, two months. And uh, I was to take the class, and according to Phoenix University, principles in the first day of class you email the chairman say hey chairman i'm taking this class which he should have already know anyway because he knows that you're taking the class is scheduled and all that so in the first day i emailed the, the the chairman that hey i'm taking the class he responded we we do our communication in email i don't think i ever called him before the chairman he's in a different state i'm in a different state so I emailed the chairman that I'm taking the proposal class and uh, the class started. Every week, the methodologies will ask us to submit portions of our the proposal, the introduction and different portions of the proposal. And she will, the methodology is either a man or a woman. This one was a woman. She, she will review each portion of your proposal. It's like a book. Well, the main portion, the main idea, proposal is like a summary of your, your writing for now, or the, the, the main idea of your writing, your dissertation. So the chairman, the, the methodologist, was reviewing each week some portion. She can, the first week they can say, send the introduction. And she will review it and say, no, this and that and that and that. And the following week, send me your this and that, different portions of your proposal. And then she will make comments remember the reason for the class is called is because you, the student and the chairman were not able to know how to make the proposal ready to submit to the next level so the, the, the class started the first week after the the methodologies gave me feedback i will send it to the chairman i'll send it to the chairman in email and with the remark of the methodologies and the, and the chairman will review the remark of the methodologies and inform me the students say okay this is why you should do this is why you should change it that way and if the chairman happens to disagree with the methodologies he can contact the methodology himself or herself depending on who is my, my chairman was a, a man and my methodology is a woman you can contact the chairman and say, hey, we disagree with this, we disagree with that. And the methodologist and the chairman will discuss what to agree on to make the student do. Then I can see what was wrong with my proposal and be able to fix it or do researches and find a way to fix the proposal. So every week, every week there's a portion of the proposal to submit to the methodologist who will read your, your writing to, to, to give you feedback and the first week I send the the, the message the, the feedback to the methodology to the chairman no response 
until we started the second week. I wrote the, chair, the chairman again and again, no response. Can I inform the methodology? Because the methodology, the following week, was expecting the answer from my chairman to see what he said and what is being done. Because normally during the eight weeks, after the first week, I'm supposed to fix the, the based on the feedback of the methodologies in, in, in collaboration with my chairman, what the, the, the methodology has suggested. And when we fix it, we will submit it to her for recorrection. So she can say, okay, now it's good. Or if it's not good, she will send another feedback. So the goal is so the proposal can be ready. And hopefully by the end of the eight weeks class, you can be ready to submit your proposal. And if it happens that you are not ready, at least you know the main element to be completed to submit your proposal in collaboration with your chairman. Please don't forget in collaboration with your chairman. So my chairman wasn't there in the first week. I wrote him, wrote him no answer. Of course, I, I, I informed the methodology the following week that my chairman is not responding to my messages. I made sure I sent him the message properly. I checked the, the same email message, email address. I use all the time. He's not responding. The second way, no answer. And the methodologist tried to reach him. He, she couldn't get hold of him. And four weeks, no answer. Five weeks, no answer. To cut the long story short, for the whole eight weeks class, my chairman was absent. A faculty member that Phoenix University has assigned to a doctoral student who have completed all his classes and who need to submit his proposal to move on, to move on towards his dissertation writing and finish it and be able to get his degree. The chairman was absent for eight weeks. The methodology tried to reach, uh, to reach him, but to no avail. And the methodology told me to report the case halfway through the, 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 the class to the academic advisor, which I did. And the academic advisor said he tried to reach him too, but he couldn't reach him. And so it's expected that they had, the school had to do something because it's their faculty. And this is students taking the class. And let me say this, the chairman's signature is a requirement to move on with the proposal. Because in my final dissertation, the chairman is the first person to sign it after me. To sign, I don't think I, the student even signs it, but it doesn't matter. But the chairman's signature is to show the school to the other level, review board and all of that. The chairman has agreed with the student writing before the student can move on. If the chairman doesn't sign it, you can't do anything. So this chairman was absent in my proposal class. And now, until the class finished, he was nowhere to be found. Remember the methodology, the teacher tried to reach him. He couldn't reach him. And I tried to reach him many times, I couldn't. The academic advisor couldn't reach him until the class finished. And although I got a B, B is a, a passing grade for doctoral level, but this class to be have a task to be completed. So it's not a matter of a B or A, but if you don't complete all the requirements, and this requirement is to fix the problems in my proposal and the chairman's signature, the chairman agreeing to it, his chairman wasn't there at all. To cut the long story short, although I got a B, if you want to say that, but I got incomplete for the proposal class, incomplete. It's like a fail. Because the goal is to complete it, get it, the work complete, and the chairman wasn't there. And the, the, the feedback that the, the teacher gave me, I tried my best to fix it. But again, I need the chairman's signature to move on. I changed as best as I could. And remember, the methodologist is an expert saying something that I might not get properly, where I need the, the help of the chairman to fix it. Not that the chairman will do the work for me, but so that I can have a clear understanding of what needs to be fixed. And the signature of the chairman is a requirement to move forward. And then the chairman was, was not there. For eight weeks, eight, eight weeks, the 
chairman wasn't there. The class ended. And I got incomplete. It was a shocker to begin with. So I was expecting the academic advisor of the school to find his chairman. What happened? I was expecting them to tell me he had an emergency uh, and he went overseas or something. Somebody got sick or something, which could be a little acceptable, a little. You know, or because if something happened like that for a student, a doctoral student taking a class that is so vital into his program, the school can send a different faculty to replace him and get the process going if there is an emergency. So I didn't hear from the academic advisors. And with the, the way I saw that the school, Phoenix University, was not helping much for me to complete my degree. I'm not asking Phoenix University to do the work for me. Doctoral degree is hard. But the part, the, 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 the part of the role to be played, because I finished all the classes, I gotta be good somehow. But now I remain writing a dissertation, and the dissertation is what the school wants you to do in order for them to give you the degree. So you can write, write, but you have to write what they want. You have to write how they want it and all that. So you depend on the school to tell you how to write it how to change this and change that, and they, they go through a lot of changes, and I was ready for that. But the chairman was gone, and I couldn't finish my proposal. So I went to the class from May to July 2017. When the class ended, I was expecting any time to receive email or a call from the chairman or from the academic advisor or from a representative of the school to tell me what happened and the chairman was absent or a week. Guess what? It didn't happen for five months. For five months, I didn't get any of those calls or nothing. And I got myself busy doing research outside the school to improve my, my proposal based on the methodologies, feedback, and based on whatever I feel like I need to be changed for, I need to change for my proposal to be good. So I was using that time. Every day, remember, I'm expecting a call from them, and they, they already know my situation. Many emails were sent to the academic advisor, the methodologies. So this, the school was aware, that's what I was thinking. And then I didn't get any until five months. When five months, of course, I tried to contact the academic advisor again, with no, no response. Oh, he would say, oh, did you hear from him? Did you hear from the uh, chairman? And all that. So, after five months, I received a call from a different academic advisor. And she was asking me, hey, Angelo, there is a class, a proposal class open coming up. That was July when the class finished, right? It was the, November to December. The class will begin in December. When they, the, a different academic advisor wrote me to ask me that, hey, there's a proposal class that was opening. And I said, proposal class opening? The, the last one I took and the chairman wasn't, uh, wasn't present and I failed the class, I'm still waiting for you guys to tell me what happened and, and for us to solve a problem because that's a big problem. I failed the class because of the absence of the faculty from Phoenix University. Something needs to be done on that. So you're telling me you just want me to register for another class? And that was what made the academic advisor to even realize that there was a problem with my last class where the faculty was missing in action. And it seemed like the school doesn't care that I didn't participate, and the chairman didn't participate in the class. And I failed the class because of that. And they didn't bother to look into the situation. They didn't bother about how frustrated I would be as a doctoral student who completed the class, and his faculty have, have failed to play his role of contributing to the progress in my studies. That's how I felt when the, 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 academy, the second academic advisor co contacted me. And then she told me that the other academic advisor 
has left the school, they really initiated looking into the situation. Before, remember the class finished in July, my chairman never contacted me what happened or he didn't even behave like he knew he was supposed to be somewhere, being in a class for eight weeks or anything. And it was the, academy, the new academic advisor in November, towards December, who started investigating on the situation, created a case number to look into the case before he, she was able to contact the, the new academic advisor, was able to contact the chairman to look into the case. And the chairman came. All this is in email, by the way. All the, what I'm telling you is in email. And the chairman came. He looked confused. He looked that he, he didn't even realize that he was supposed to be in a class. Although I sent him an email the first day of the class, you remember? I said they, we have to send them an email the first day of the class to know that we are taking the class. And he responded. To cut the long story short, the chairman looked confused as if he doesn't even know the principal of the school that he's supposed to participate in the class, my proposal class. He even expressed that he didn't know they were making me to take a class with a different faculty member and some confusion like that. And I was shocked that, really? Is that the, the, the quality of the school I'm going to and I've completed all my classes there, doctoral classes with a lot of student loans? And we started digging into the case. So I told them that, hey, you have caused me to fail the class. You need to compensate me for me to retain the class. And you have wasted my time and resources not only during the class from May to July, but from that July till now going to December 2017, you have delayed the progress I could have made into my program. So the school needs to do something. I'm talking about the school now. Of course, the faculty, the, the chairman is the one by his high by the school. So I say, you need to, you guys need to do something and reward me properly. Not that I want the money, but the situation you have created, you have to compensate me somehow. And as a student of your school, I want to resolve this problem locally between us. So the media doesn't know that we can resolve the problem and I can move on and finish my degree. So when I expressed that, the academic advisor sent the claims. I, I told them I want to speak to the president if I have to. The school executives or whoever is in charge of the senior uh, there's the, the higher level of doctoral degree. Uh, whoever is in charge to submit my case because this is a big mess. If I take it to the media, it will not make the school look good. So I thought they're going to resolve the problem locally because I just want to finish my degree and move on. Although I was frustrated and angry. And they assigned somebody. He was a, a senior level manager of uh, advanced studies. And uh, I don't want to call his name, but if I have to, I will in a different video. By the way, I'm not going to give up until I get my degree and I get compensated properly. So they assigned a person and the person wanted to, just to abbreviate everything, he wanted to pay me, he wanted to, ref, uh, to, 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 to give me credit partially for my tuition paid for the class that I missed or the class that, I, that I'm taking but I couldn't pass because the, 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 the school faculty member, the chairman, my chairman, was not there. Or he was absent. They want to pay me only partial tuition. What, the, the tuition that I pay, they wanted to pay me a part of it. Not to talk about the way you, you delay my program from May to the class in May to July. If, I, if the chairman was there, and even if I didn't do good in the class, it would be my fault. But the chairman was missing. He caused a problem. So after July, and it's December now, that we started looking the, into the case, not even because you are willing to contact me to address the problem, but it was a class that I was opening, and you just wanted me to continue as if nothing was. That is very ridiculous. So he would say he, the, the first... A signed person say he can only, they can only pay me, the school can only pay me partial into my tuition. 
And I said, no, that's no, that's no reasonable. That's not reasonable. And I told them I want to speak to the president of the school, the executive, whoever, student, executive, or whoever. I'm a doctoral student now. So they, they, they say they, they can't let me talk to the president, but they can let me talk to somebody assigned to manage his office. And they sent me a second person from the, the president's office, supposedly. I don't know because... I contact them and I, I was telling them I need to talk to the president of the school. I need my case addressed by a higher level. And they assigned the second person. The second person, I explained the problem to him. All the previous email were forward to him already anyway. And to quite a long story short, his conclusion was he looked into my case and rather than the school owing me some money, rather I owe the school some money. How did he come up with that? Because I don't want the school a penny up to that level. The school has never, because sometimes even I get student loan for, for my classes. Even some years, they, the school sent me some money back. Some loan that I took, I get some money from back from me. And for the, the all of a sudden, the school to say I owe them money, it is another problem. It's just too much. And I said, how did you find that? They sent me different numbers somehow and come up that I, rather than the school owing me money, that I owe the school some money. Of course, I was angry. I was angry. And I told him, and I said, don't play that game with me. From that point onward, I told them if they don't, if they want to play game with me, I'll sue them. I'll sue them. I'll find a lawyer and sue them. But as a student of that school, who have completed all my courses, who want to graduate, and hopefully be silenced about the issue, I need them to revise the decision before the case go further. People, can you imagine? I was every day thinking the school going to contact me, they're going to do something, until a year has passed. A year. So from 2017, we are now 2018, that has passed. Until today, three years later, the school has not taken any action to contact me and to solve the problem. I made a video before on this situation. Some of the school people have seen it and they emailed me and said they will look into the case, but nothing was done till today. Okay, so when the second person assigned by the school say I owe the school money, I said, are you serious? Okay, I wanted to continue my school and finish the degree and find a way to sue them later or whatever. So, without the chairman, I'm now taking matters into my hand to use the recommendation of the methodologies. The methodology asked me to change my study design. If you don't know study design, don't worry about it. It's a major element of the writing. My study design was phenomenology, something I have researched about for three years, and I mastered it. At least the teacher liked my writing about it, all my information that I bring out about the phenomenology. The teacher never said that I was lacking on it for three years. And now the methodology is saying that I have to change that major element of my writing. That is a problem. What is a problem, you might ask? Meaning, what was the chairman doing all these three years and he never see the necessity of me changing this major element of my writing to mention it to me so I can, I, I should have done it and move on with the program. And now I finish all the classes, research largely on this study design and you are asking me to change it? That is a big mess. But I was willing to do it to get my degree. So I went back to the school system to find another chairman. Of course, this chairman, by what he did, is no longer useful to me. I fired him. So I went in to look for another chairman. Anyway, this chairman, his speciality is the phenomenology that I was doing. So the, the different uh, uh, study design they were asking me to do I have to find a chairman who specializes in, in this new study design. 
So I went to the system. I'm angry, I'm frustrated, but I want to find a, another chairman and move on and finish my, my degree. Guess what? The school does not have a chairman who can who is available to take me to finish my studies. There were only four uh, chairmen in the system, chairman or chairwoman in the system, who were handling the recommended study design. And all of them, I emailed them. Some of them didn't even bother to email me. I met them many times or a few times at least. Some of them didn't even bother to reply to me. And those who replied, they said they were booked up. They don't have place for any other student. And I continued this for many months, writing these teachers, going back to the system to see if they will have a, a faculty member who can be my chairman. I didn't see any for many months. And remember, when you don't go to school for six months, you become automatically a dropout in the program. And when you become a dropout in the program, automatically you have to start paying back your student loan. And we're talking about a doctoral level here. Not many people in doctoral level pay for their classes cash. They generally use student loan. And it's a lot of money. The tuition for a doctoral student is $20,500. At least in Phoenix University, that's what I pay a year for full time. $20,000. And we're talking about four years here. So you can imagine, you can have an idea how much the student loan is. Now, without a degree, you are considered a dropout, an automatic dropout, when the school is the one who caused this situation. Not only you are a dropout, but you have to start paying the tuition, the, the student loans back. When you don't have the degree, to use the degree to get a better job, to make more money, to make the payment of the student loan easier. Because you don't have the degree. I completed the, the, the classes, but I still don't have my doctoral degree. So I cannot apply for a, a better job to make better money and to be easily be paying the student loan. So I'm faced with, I, I become a dropout from the school because I didn't go to school for six months. It doesn't mention, it didn't matter if the school cost it or I cost it. This one, the school cost it. And then I started paying the, the student loan back. And now I'm just like a regular master degree level. Although I completed the class here, I'm not a doctoral degree holder because of all this school has cost. And can you imagine the effect of this situation on me? It has affected me. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. It has affected me greatly. Number one, all people that knew that I was completing my doctoral degree, they asked me, what do I tell them? That, oh, I completed a degree, but my studies are my studies are paralyzed. I'm completing a degree, but I'm not a, doc, a, a doctor. I don't have my doctoral degree. And the lack of promotion or a better job that I can get for the effort I've, I have put into place for four years completing my doctoral degree. It's like that effort is useless because if you ask me now, I have a master's degree, I don't have a doctoral degree. Because of Finnish University. Oh, I was frustrated and I was mad. And I'm a child of God. I even wrote them that. I said, you don't mess with me because I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And I believe in God having revenge for me. I even told it, because I wrote them. When I'm frustrated, I write them to express myself. And I said, don't mess with me because nobody will make me cry. Nobody will give me a headache. Nobody will frustrate me and go and punish. I told them that in 2017, 2018. And I said, if you don't take the action that you need to take to, 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 to pull me back in the rightful place and give me what I deserve, I will pray to God against your school. And I did. I did. I can't even tell you how I did. Because I don't know what church you go to, if you go to church. But I believe in the power of God. Seriously. And I pray. And, and, and less than a year later, I heard that the federal, uh, a 
federal, the federal government have charged Finis for lying in the advertisement, and the federal government has required that they, they pay some million dollars as a punishment for lying in the advertisement. Oh, I felt like that was the way God has punished Phoenix University because this guy has prayed to God because he has frustrated me. I was very frustrated. And up to today, I, st I am still suffering from that. Can you imagine that? For three years now, I'm without a degree. Not because I defaulted, but because the school has failed me and no action is being taken. You say, oh, why don't you do anything about it? The school is in Arizona. It is Arizona. Tempo, Arizona, or Phoenix, Arizona, somewhere. And I, and I was in, uh, in, in Virginia State before. The classes are is online. And now I moved to a different state. I have my life I'm facing, my own challenging life problems I'm facing. And uh, if, it were, it was, if I was living in the same state as the school, I can go to a lawyer's office, find some lawyers and sue the school. But being in a different state, that is a little more complicated than that. And I don't have uh, money. I contact some lawyers who want some big money because it's a big situation. Who want some big money to be paid up front. And I don't have that because remember, I don't have the doctoral degree to get a better job where I can do this. So, and nothing is done so far, all three years. And I've written the school executive, the methodologies, the chairman, all the people that the school have assigned, the academic advisor. I've written them many letters all the time, showing them my frustration that I'm still waiting for them to solve the problem that they have created on me. And nothing was done. What is my deduction in, in, in all this? I don't know who you are, but, and I, but I, I want to tell you, the doctoral program of Phoenix University is a lucrative thing they have. F Phoenix University is a lucrative university, meaning they are there to make money. That's all they are there for. They don't look after you. They don't care if you get your degree or not. Let me tell you how they do it. They will tease you into the program in the beginning. Either you are writing good or not, they will, they will just let you be flying and going. They, they are not serious about forming you to become a, a, a degree holder and use your degree effectively, at least in the doctoral program that I experienced. They're not doing that. They're just there to make money out of you. They want just there. The, 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 the faculty is very disorganized, maybe even unqualified. You know, not all teachers are, are good teachers, you know that. Because I've seen with many other students who the chairman, the, the faculty, the, the chairman has agreed with their writing and the writing went to the next level. It was completely rejected. Completely rejected. The, the chairman and the, next, the review board and all that, they, they're supposed to have a little connection where when the chairman review your stuff, your writing, help you correct or, or recommended you to correct this and that and that, you, you do it and you go to the next level, it got to have a little value. But if you go there, you got to reject it like nothing. And not just one person, two person. It's just so for many students in my situation like that who cannot move up and get a degree, something is wrong with that. In school that are decent, the graduation rate is between 40 and 80 percent for doctoral students like me. But for Phoenix University, you know what it is? 19 percent. Actually, that 19 percent is some years ago when, I, when I, I look it up. It might even be worse now. 19 percent, one nine, less than 20 percent. Less than 20 percent. And remember, this, the, the, the federal government has, has punished Phoenix University for lying to the nation and to the world and has punished them to pay some million dollars to forgive many, many uh, debts to students and to do some stuff. 
I think it was $392 million. I'm not sure about that figure, but I know it's a million dollars. And the federal government has required the Phoenix University to pay for lying to the, to the media and to the peop to people. My friend, be careful about Phoenix University. They will take your money. They will not form you properly. And if you want to be in a doctoral program, please go find a different school because you'll be in, the, in similar situation like mine. What is going on? They know they have made a lot of money out of me for four years. But helping, as far as helping me to get my degree, they don't care. They don't care. Because what, when, once you get to this level, there's no, no more many classes I can take. It's just about writing and doing this and that. They don't care. I've seen many other students who have written into the chairman say, oh, you're excellent, you're good. And you go to the next level, they throw it out like a trash. Like a, they throw their, their writing out like a trash. So what is that? How can the next level say, what is that? When your chairman has reviewed your work until this level, meaning the chairman don't know what he's doing. The chairman and, and the next level, there's no connection between them. So the student is just um, uh, confused and writing forever until they, they, they got discouraged and give up. That's why it is 19% graduation rate. I saw that on a... On, uh, the Department of Education website some years ago, like I'm saying. I'm, I'm sure it's worse now because that's before the school got in trouble with the federal government requiring them to pay some million dollars. So more than likely, it has decreased much lower now. It might even be 9% now, I don't know. I don't care much to even go and look up the, the, the rating anymore. But I'm here to tell you as a doctoral student who has completed all the course and who did good, 3.79 GPA over 4, over 4.0. That's close to 3.8. I want to tell you, be careful of Phoenix University. If you are a lawyer and you don't have, you, you, are, not, you are not afraid to confront a big, a big organization like Phoenix University, you are a bull lawyer. Contact me, write me, send me your, your information so we can sue the school. If you are a media person and you bring light to situations like this, either it's racism, I don't know. They just say, oh, this black guy want to graduate and become somebody for his society and, and then they want to make sure they, they drag me down. I don't know. So, they, so light can be brought over the situation. So Phoenix University does not continue destroying lives. It has been three years. It has been hard for me. I'm stressed over the situation. I, I don't have my doctoral degree. When I completed my last class, I can smell the doctoral degree coming because I was a determined student to do whatever to get it. But the school has failed me. The school has failed to play their part in contributing to my progress. For me, writing my doctoral, degree, my doctoral dissertation and my proposal. Be careful of Phoenix University. Like I say, I'm a child of God. And you, nobody mistreats me unpunishedly. Nobody. Oh, I didn't start yesterday. There have been situations where people have do me wrong. And I can tell you, God always revenge, have a revenge on them. And it's not finished. Because if Phoenix make me cry one tear, they will cry much more. Multiply. And all the people involved that has caused my situation, God Almighty will avenge me. But not only that, but I will deal with them legally. Is it going to take one month or, or one year? I'll find a lawyer who bring light to the situation. I contacted T TMZ, Oprah, many medias, and I'm waiting, I'm praying and waiting for God to open the door so light can be shined on my situation to expose the lucrative goal, the Machiavellic manners of Phoenix University. 
to have the, the central region, the, the central office in Temple, Arizona. Be careful of Phoenix University. Share this video with people. Again, my name is Angelo Kumoji. You've seen this video on YouTube or whatever. You can write me. Write in the general comments. I'll see it. And if you can help me, help. By a lawyer or somebody who can bring light to the situation. So the, the, the nation can know. So people don't sweat hard. Sleepless nights. To study. Doctoral study? It's not a joke. Everybody know that. Less than 1% of American Americans have the doctoral degree. And I completed all the classes. All the sacrifice. Resources. Family sacrifice and all that. And then it's now just hanging in the balance. So life can be brought to that. So this doesn't happen to anybody else. Thank you for watching this. May God keep all of us. May God deliver us from our enemies. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Again, I fight spiritually and I fight legally. If you can have or you can send this video to a lawyer. I've written many big lawyers. They don't respond. Some of them don't respond. But if you know somebody, send this video. Share this video so everybody know. If you are at Phoenix University, share this video with other people so they can know the type of school they are going to. So they don't waste their energy and their money, their resources for nothing. Thank you very much. God bless us all.